but talk about why it is actually really important fundamentally for whether you're an ultra runner or running like a 10k or something to have that that sprint and speed element yeah i mean the the faster we run the more muscle fibers we recruit Mm -hmm. and the more muscle fibers we recruit and use the more efficient we become so even though you might be running a marathon or an ultra marathon or any endurance type of race the more efficient you can become the more muscle fibers you can train your body to recruit the better but that only can take place when you're running really really fast and there's a lot of strength that goes involved with that. The, the, the faster we run, we tend to have better form. The, the more elasticity we use, the more muscle stiffness and leg stiffness we we generate. All these are a good thing. Muscle stiffness doesn't sound like a good thing, but it's a very, very good thing. With sticky hops, we're hopping on one leg at a time. A nice controlled movement with good leg stiffness. You just want to hop forward and stick it and have a slight pause so you know you've gained your balance and stability without a whole lot of leg action. Keep your legs nice and stiff. And so this really can be amplified by doing sprints or, you know, 10, 15 second faster runs that are really fun to do and they don't have to be fatigue inducing like other harder workouts. So um, we can do them quite frequently. And, um, and I I like, I want to point out that the, these are different than what we hear people doing strides, you know, strides, I think kind of, that's just a poor word. (laughs) You know, if, if I say do some strides or do some sprints, you just intuitively have two different pictures in your head. And so when we, Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I think the purpose is the same, but I think people don't really understand truly what a stride should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like in my mind, when we do, I I feel like I'm only referencing my high school career, but it's like when I did strides, I would think of it as maybe doing 60% speed and doing really long um, steps, which is counterintuitive because that means you're over striding. Right. Right. Whereas, yeah, a sprint, you would want it to be fast, but short and quick, and then like landing right under your body. Is that how you, like, what is, yeah, when you're telling your athletes, is that how, you you know, so yeah, when we're, when we're talking about this specific purpose, it's, it's a, a 10 to 15 to 20 second type of effort. So again, very, very short, relatively fast. Um, and for all the reasons you describe, everything lands underneath you. We're, we're, we're training that neuromuscular system to turn over your legs very quickly that also produces lubrication in your body. So, oh, it, tell and, me more and about so that. you know, so that, yeah, the faster we run in this environment, in this type of way, our, our bodies produce chemicals that act as lubrication. So now you're going to feel good. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so again, it can be used in that way too, to really keep us feeling healthy. You know, people, people think, you know, this is going down a whole different uh, uh, rabbit hole, but often people think injuries are recreated by, by doing speed work where most times I see the majority of dysfunction and injuries that take place are when we're running slow and easy and long. And, um, and so that, that's the purpose. Another purpose of doing the sprints is that we're, we're training our body to feel good and, and to have that turnover. And when would you recommend that if we were talking about a structure for someone of any level, they're not training for anything. Like right now I'm not training for anything. You and I are working on a lot of fundamentals together. And so, and we're starting to add in the speed work. Um, so for for a regular runner, what do you recommend as far as how, when to do it in the run and then how many times a week to do it and how can they measure that they're being successful in making a difference? I th- I think the best answer is anytime. And, okay. and, and I say that not every day, not every run, but keep it keep it fresh and keep it fun. 
if in motivating, if if it feels good that for you to do it after your warm up, before your long run, go for it. You know, again, these these are not necessarily fatigue inducing, or should they be? Um, so they shouldn't interrupt what you're doing as far as what the purpose of your day is. But I, I would say, ideally, I like to do them after a warm up and before what you would be considered the bulk of the run, because now part of the purpose of doing them is turning the, the neuromuscular system on and firing muscles and, and recruiting more muscle fibers. So it's almost like a warm up. So you get your nice easy warm up in and then you do these sprints and then you're going to feel really good for whatever you're choosing to do after that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in that respect, you know, maybe you're doing them twice a week, you know, and, and starting, you know, four or five of them and then building up to maybe 10, doing 10 by 15 seconds, 10 seconds. Um, and the key is we want a lot of rest in between. You know, we're so talking walking back to like, like the yeah. amount of, oh yeah, so you're doing it by time. So you record so maybe, maybe two to three minutes. Okay. So it might, might be if, if you're doing a warm up and then you're out for your run, Hey, do a sprint for 10 seconds and then go really easy for two or three minutes and go again. Okay. okay? You don't necessarily have to the, walk or stand there. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and that way you can just kind of keep, feel like you're doing something, but you keep keeping on with what you're doing. Um, but that, that rest is super important for two reasons. One, it, it helps produce those chemicals I talked about that are act as lubrication and, and helping create the, the chemicals we want in the body. Um, and also you're getting a lot of rest. So then each one can be relatively fast. This shouldn't be a cardiovascular workout where a cardiovascular workout in this sense would be very little rest. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, you know, you might do a, a, a Tabata type of workout where it's 30 seconds fast, 30 seconds rest. That's that's more of a cardiovascular or stamina type of workout where here we want just the opposite, a lot of rest. I want to talk about rest. Well, I want to talk about warm ups and rest. Two yep. things that a lot of athletes, myself included, don't really feel like we need to do unless like if it's my speed day, I'm like, oh yeah, I'll do the warm up. But if I'm only doing a 40 minute run, I have learned that I need to start out a little slower and warm up. But I previously used to just go right out the door, run the same pace, the entire run and end. So talk about the importance of a warm up for a runner, no matter what kind of run they're doing. Well, I, I think um, we're maybe talking two different types of things. Okay. So one one type of warm up that kind of goes hand in hand with the the reasons we do sprints is to do foot core exercises before you head out mm -hmm. so doing work doing some barefoot drills balancing on your foot barefoot at home again helps stimulate the muscles in our feet helps turn on the neuromuscular system between our brain and our feet that activate all our running muscles Okay, by how we use our feet, how we train our feet, activate other parts of our middle, how we use our feet, activate our glute. Mm -hmm. So by doing this before you even go out the door, now you've turned the switch on to this complete electrical system throughout your body that's firing muscles that you want to use while you're running. So I think that's the, kind of the most important type of wor warm up is that you're you're turning these muscles on. And then you go out the door and, you know, every run is relatively different, you know, so if you're just going out for a nice, easy run, you really don't need a, a warm up. You know, okay. I use heart rate, you know, so maybe you're starting in zone one for five minutes or so and just kind of getting everything moving, focusing on your form, your foot strike, and then you build into, you know, your steady zone two, zone three run. Um okay. If, if I'm having you go to the track, you know, we're doing some drills and skills a little bit to, again, kind of wake up the neuromuscular system. So it's more about warming up the neuromuscular system than, than it being a cardiovascular type of warm up. if that makes sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And I think I agree. I have, um, it, it does make sense just to like, 
you know, you need a little bit more doing the foot core exercises or even we are big fans of rock lobster. Yeah, and, great. You know, running in place or marching yep. in place. Yep. And I do yep. feel like it does sort of that muscle memory over time. It is connecting my mind so that when I start running, I'm landing right beneath my hips. I'm not overstriding because I start slow with that reminding me of how to move. Yeah. I mean, run, running in place, you know, as you know, is the, the ultimate drill at, mm-hmm. while you're at home, you know, take off your shoes and socks, run in place. Now, you know how to strike the ground, where to strike the ground. And it's wonderful strength training. Yeah. 